Got a Sony TCRX 70 ES Auto Reverse cassette deck. No playback. This is one that I had last year that we subbed a motor in that we took out of a Technics because the motor had failed on it before. And it's not playing now. Let's see what went wrong. And it doesn't not play in either direction, but it does fast forward and rewind. Let's see why. Now this is one that I put a motor in about a year ago. Remember the one that we pulled the motor out of the, the Techniques unit and the uh, and the speed control? And the motor is fine. It's it's spinning like no problem. Let's see why it's not playing. mechanism is not fully loading. So something is preventing the, the head and the controllers from going all the way into place. This is the three motor system. It has one motor for the driving the capstans, which you can see are, are spinning no problem. It's not the belt because there's lots of torque on there. And then there's a control motor that lifts and lowers the mechanism. And then there's a real motor over here which operates the, uh, the, the tape spools. So I'm wondering if this one, is there a belt slipping here? Let's see here. So I'm just going to see if this motor is spinning. I can't tell whether it's slipping from where I'm sitting. But if I put something on the motor, I'll be able to tell whether the motor is turning here and whether the belt is slipping. Aha! Seems like this belt is slipping. Yeah, that's exactly what's happened. So what's happened on this one is it, the, the deck hasn't been used a lot, but you know rubber parts do deteriorate and it looks like the, the little plate or the little control belt here has started to slip. This one right here. So we're going to change that little belt out. That should be relatively easy on this machine. I'm pretty confident that changing that little belt here will solve this problem. What's happening is as it, this is the belt, or this is the motor that raises and lowers the head, and I think what's happening is just the belt is just slipping a little bit, which which happens, you know. It, uh, belts do, uh, do get sloppy after a period of time especially if they're not being used. I've had that happen where, even on my own equipment, where I've replaced a belt, and the machines work fine, and it's been fine for, you know, weeks and weeks and weeks, and then I have it, let it sit for a month or two and go to use it, and oh, it's not working. That happens. Especially since a lot of the new belts that we're getting these days, and they tend to uh, get a little more slippery. So let's pull this mechanism out and let's see if I can find another belt and get this one working. Mechanism comes out really easy on this unit. Just two screws on the top and two more screws in the bottom. They're marked with an arrow and the chassis should lift out. Just like that, we'll undo a few plugs. Now I can service 
the actual deck away from the, the rest of the unit. This is the belt that I need to change. I'm just noting how it's uh, how it's on there. And the easiest way to get this belt out will be is probably remove this entire bracket, which means I have to pull the the main motor off as well because uh, one of the screws that holds it in place is uh, right here. So remove these screws. Of course the last time I had this one in is when I, I changed this motor. So we'll remove that little board and unplug the head wires just so that they don't get damaged. So the, the wires themselves don't get damaged. So we'll just pop those plugs out. That way I can remove that board out of the way. capstan belt. And now we should be able to remove a couple more screws and the uh, mechanism should lift out enough that I can get the belt off. So we'll remove the screw. And remove this screw here. This screw right here. I think those are the only ones I got to take out on this, and then I should be able to I should be able to move this far enough, yeah, that I can get the belt off and replace it. Uh, if I pull the if I pull the pinch or the, the uh, if I pull the flywheels out completely, I can lift this whole piece off. But I don't know that I want to do that if I don't have to. Just lift this out this far. I can slip the belt off, and slip a new one on. So there's the there's the old belt. See if I just move the motor back a bit, I have enough clearance that I can get the belt and pull it out like that. Okay, so this is what I need to find. I need to find a belt about this size, and one that's not becoming so stretchy. As you can see, this one here is, uh, well, if I stretch it out, you'll see how slow it returns to normal. See, that's what happens with these old belts. Is they'll be fine for a while. This is on its way to turning to a mushy belt. Give this thing another year or two, and it'll melt. So. But yet a year ago, this belt was just fine. And that's what happens with these with these older belts. Is they'll be fine one day, and then they start to deteriorate. And once they start to really deteriorate, they go downhill very quick. And they can work fine one day, and then the next day they're slipping. And you know, a year later, if they haven't been used, they've turned to goo. That's just what happens with them. So the belt on the right is a new belt, as you can see. When I stretch this one, it snaps back. 
to its original size. Right? If I stretch it out, it'll just pop back to its original size immediately. The bad belt, if I stretch this one out, you'll see that it, see how slow it returns? That's how you tell a belt is starting to go bad. Now, here's something to keep in mind. Even if you order belts off the internet, you have no way of knowing when you receive a new belt whether it's going to be one that's factory fresh, unlikely, or one that's been sitting around for a while. I've received new belts that were still in the plastic bag and you can see right around where the belt was sitting in the bag that the, the plastic is all discolored. It's kind of turned, the clear plastic is kind of turned a brown color and that's just from, from off-gassing and the reaction between the plastic and the belt. Um, anytime you deal with any of these old belt drive machines, even if you put a new belt in, a year from now that new belt might be bad because you don't know how long that belt's been sitting you know, waiting to be sold. So that's something to keep in mind if you're ordering belts off the internet is that uh, you could be getting what you think are brand new belts but they're actually ones that have been sitting around for 10 years. New uh, control belt. We'll fish this one in here and get this one around the pulley and put this unit back together and run some tests on it make sure everything's good and uh, this one should be good for well until something else breaks but that's the thing when you're when you're servicing old electronics is that uh, you got a bunch of old parts right and you don't know how long anything's going to last and this is the same problem that anybody that's servicing vintage electronics knows especially when you're dealing with uh, when you're dealing with mechanical parts like belts that so I can drop that belt in behind. There we go, that's a bit better. Now I just gotta fish it over top of the motor. For that I will use my trusty dental pick. push the caption shafts back in and push their retainer washers back down. Hold those in place. I can put the screws back in that hold this board in place, or the, the bracket in place, and the circuit board, and reinstall the capstan motor. That should uh, get this one up and running again. Now time to remount the motor. So the belt goes around one capstan around this way and the, and the other flywheel the other way like this. And then it's looped around the motor itself. 
and bring that motor in place and just slide it over the pulley. Sometimes it's easier if you use your trusty dental pick just to grip the belt a little better and hold it into position while the motor is placed in. Make sure that everything turns freely, which it does. It sounds a little quieter in here now, it's because I was able to turn the heat off. It's actually up to 14 degrees in here now, which is a little warmer than it was when I started. I was down at around, uh, I guess, zero. It's uh, about minus three outside right now. And um, we had a significant dump of snow here. Um, not the record, I think the record here was set in uh, 1996. But this is the most snow that we've had since 1996. We got uh, where I am here, I think around 10 centimeters, <laughs> which doesn't sound like a lot, right? For people that are thinking in terms of uh, of inches, that would be, well, I don't know, four, four to five inches, somewhere in there. Not a hell of a lot, but uh, for these parts, that's a significant amount because we don't normally see snow where I live, or when we do, we see very, very little of it. So I've been out driving the old 12 volt around the last couple days because uh, it's got good winter tires on it and my uh, newer one, well, it doesn't. I gotta break down, I guess, and get some tires, get some new tires for my newer car at some point, but uh, Right now I don't. I just have the ones that came with it from the factory and they are pretty much worn out. So my car is sitting parked and I'm driving my other one. Which is kind of nice because it, uh, it actually drives very nice in the snow. This is the screw that goes down here. This other one went down, I think, in the middle here. That other screw goes down right through the middle, except to loosen off this board here. It goes right down. There's an access hole right through there to put that screw in if you forget to do it when you're reassembling the, the unit. And then this little circuit board slides in there and is grounded to the chassis. back in. And I spy a loose connection. Or one that's ready to go. Here we go. Just happened to notice that when I was plugging that back in that the solder on these pins here looks like it's uh, ready to let go. What do you think? So we'll just fix that up. movement now. How's this other one look over here? Let's uh, put the mechanism back in the uh, the chassis and see that it all works.
we can verify that the mechanism is working before I install it back in the cabinet. If I hit eject, okay, play. There it goes. So there's the unit in play. Stop, reverse play, stop, forward play, back to reverse play. So you can see that this unit uses the rotating head design. It's just done by a little cam here. It's all controlled by that same motor. So if that belt is slipping, it's going to cause problems. This is the belt over here that was giving us trouble. That little belt there. Now tape decks like this, any of these mechanical decks, they do like to be used on a regular basis. And th this one actually has a mode switch in it too, which is attached to the cam gear right down here. It's a little switch. There's a rotary mode switch, just like VCRs have. They can get dirty after a while and cause the unit to, to miss signal. That wasn't the case on this one though. This one, the problem with this one was it was uh, just the belt was slipping. We can give this, this switch a shot of cleaner just to make sure it stays clean for the long term, but any of these decks that are cam controlled like this, you want to make sure that you do exercise them on a regular basis. Even if you're not planning on using the tape deck for a period of time, what you want to do is turn the thing on, load a tape, even if you don't plan on playing the tape, go through all the modes. Fast forward, rewind, fast forward, rewind, play forward, play reverse, play forward, play reverse. Switch modes back and forth. You know, do it maybe 10 times and then you can stop. What you want to do is you want to keep mechanical parts from getting frozen, especially if the grease starts to dry out. You want to keep the belts from getting sloppy because when the belts sit for a period of time, they ended up, they end up going like this, which is the one that, this is the one that came out of this one. They end up becoming really very elasticy and lose their strength and um, it just keeps everything working so even in the owner's manual for every piece of a Sony equipment that I've ever seen and I'm sure every other piece of equipment had this buried somewhere in the manual about uh, maintenance and it would say use the equipment if you're if your equipment's not going to be used and this applied to camcorders and everything it's it. if you're not planning on using the equipment for more than a month Turn it on once a month and just operate all the functions. Load a tape, go into play, stop, forward, reverse, fast forward, reverse, scan, forward, scan back in, it, in, in uh, the case of VCRs, but you want to use it if you're going to be storing them. Units that are used on a regular basis, this doesn't really apply because you're using it, but if you're planning on storing a piece of equipment, turn it on once a month, if not more frequently. And just run it through its paces even if you don't plan on listening to it just run it through its paces for a few minutes and then you can turn it off and that will certainly maintain things like encoder switches that will eventually the contacts will oxidate and once that happens you end up with weird problems so keep that in mind always run this equipment on a regular basis especially as it's getting older because uh, the worst thing for any electromechanical equipment, cassette decks, VCRs, turntables, reel-to-reel, -reel, camcorders. Any, the worst thing for any of this stuff is sitting around. If you leave it sit around for a period of time, there's a good chance that when you go to use it again, it's not going to work properly, if at all. I'll put the mechanism back in the chassis. Then we're going to run some tests on the unit. I'll make a recording and play it back. And uh, I'll do it like I always do. I'll, I'll, I'll plug it right in so that we can hear the type of quality that this unit is going to record.
go check the speed using a good old guitar tuner very close we can certainly maybe get that a little closer oh, it's pretty it's pretty close there we go that's pretty darn close to being exactly on frequency so 440 Hertz as I've talked about before that's the same as your A string on a guitar. So any any basic little guitar tuner like this, if you don't have a frequency counter or you don't have a scope with a frequency counter, these are dirt cheap and you can set up any tape deck just as long as you have a tape that has got a 440 hertz tone. Some of them will have a 400 hertz tone and of course that's gonna be wrong. So I'll make a recording on this one. Oh look, it's got an auto record level. If I put this in record, uh, what is it, pause? If I hit the auto record level, it's going to adjust. You see the knob turning? It's going to set the level and lock it in there as to what this unit thinks. Oh, look, it's going to keep adjusting it. So what it's doing now is it's just monitoring the levels and it's going to tweak it. So the deck figures out what level will be good. Once it's done, the uh, light should stop flashing. I think it stopped flashing. There. Okay, it stopped flashing now. Now it's not going to adjust anymore. Now it's locked in the signal for that, for the level that I'm giving it now. Um, we'll do this in Dolby, uh, Dolby C, just, just so. <laughs> um, got my deck, or my music source ready to go. So let's cue something up here. I got a track queued up. We'll uh, release the pause, start the track playing, and uh, we'll let this track play through. We'll rewind the tape, and then we'll play it back directly off the camera and see how well this one records.
okay this one's done it's gonna run it on test for a while here and uh, then send it on its way thanks for watching we'll catch you in the next one bye